Welcome to Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. In the next half hour, you'll obtain insights and tools to transform your life using the biblical principles found in the 12-step program. We believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience because we all have struggles in life. Struggles with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, and relationships to name a few. You'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through life recovery. Your host is Steve Arterburn, founder of New Life Ministries and Women of Faith, author of over 100 books, and teaching pastor at Northview Church in Carmel, Indiana, one of the 20 largest churches in America. Steve is the co-editor of the Life Recovery Bible, the number one selling recovery Bible. With over 3 million copies sold, this is the Bible given to inmates by Prison Fellowship and the Pew Bible for the Salvation Army. Now here's Steve. Hi there, and welcome to Life Recovery Today. Steve Arterburn here. We've got a great program for you. I'm interviewing a very special guest today, me. Actually, I'm not going to interview me. I'm just going to talk about some things that I think might be really important for us to have a great year. Now, before we get started, I want to tell you a story. I may have told it to you before. But Prison Fellowship was sitting on some hundreds of thousands of dollars to give away Bibles to prisoners. But they weren't giving away very many. Many of the prisoners or chaplains weren't asking for them. So they went to those chaplains and they said, we've got to step this up. We've got to figure out some way to get more Bibles in the hands of prisoners. And they asked all the chaplains, what is the Bible that most prisoners want? And the answer was the Life Recovery Bible, which is the foundation of everything that we do here. Well, they worked out a, a process with Tyndale House Publishers that any prisoner who, through their chaplain, requests a Bible, they will send them, and Tyndale sends it directly. They had to redo their whole system because they weren't used to sending out one Bible at a time, just, you know, in boxes and stuff. But they worked out a system, and whenever a person requests a Bible, Tyndale sends that person a Bible directly. Well, the first year, and this is how big it is. This is the English version of the Life Recovery Bible. The Inside Journal is the magazine where they find the coupons for these. And then they did a Spanish version. Huge. Well, the first year they did it, they gave away somewhere around 19,000 Bibles. That was year before last. And then this past year, they told me that they have given away 89,000 Bibles. Life Recovery Bibles to prisoners. I just think that's fantastic. And so I want to say to you that uh, this process that we're going through, uh, it's not just for prisoners, and it's not just for alcoholics and drug addicts. It's for everybody. And I think what I'm going to talk to you about today is evidence that all the things that we talk about here on Life Recovery Today apply to all things. Now, Today, when we come back from this break, I'm going to talk to you about how do we get through stuff, how do we get over it, and how do we get beyond it. Because a lot of people, well, they get through it, but as you know, years later, they're still struggling, and they've never, ever gotten over it. But God wants to do something with us far beyond that. He wants us to get beyond it. And he has a purpose for every pain and struggle that we've gone through. So we'll take a break and we'll come back and I'll let you know how to start this year. Are you going through your struggles alone? Do you want someone to talk to to help you through your pain? Do you feel like a failure when you relapse again, telling yourself, next time will be different? Don't walk this path alone anymore. Join a life recovery group today and be a person that your friends and family can be proud of. God created us to be in community, and we believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience. There are life recovery groups all over the country, and if there isn't one in your area, we can help you start one. Life recovery brings recovery to you, right where you are. You'll take a journey with others to find healing and freedom. Whether you're looking to join a group or start one, New Life Ministries is here for you. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or visit liferecoverytoday.net.
Welcome back to Life Recovery Today. In the previous section, I talked about that Life Recovery Bible, and if you'd like to get a copy, well, they're available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or newlife.com. It's also the place you can call to figure out how in the world you could be part of a Life Recovery group or even start one. Well, as I'm giving this, we are in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic. And a lot of people are doing just fine. No big deal. And other people, it has shattered their whole lives. Jobs, uh, they've lost family members, or they've been through it and they were not left the same as before. Their health has been destroyed. Well, it's really a tragic thing when something like this impacts a life. You're going along there, you got enough trouble and struggle as it is, and then you get the virus. Well, I don't care whether you're dealing with coronavirus, uh, Miley Cyrus, kids that defy us, relationships that aren't too uh, desirous, all that stuff inside us. Woo! It doesn't matter what we're dealing with. I think that God wants to have a word with us. And one of my favorite verses is out of Psalm 81. And God says, Oh, that my people would listen to me. You know, here we are, we have this big book of God's Word, and we don't read it, and we don't do what it says, we don't listen to God. But if we would, our lives would be completely different. So I want to start by giving you a verse of, about kind of what Jesus said when He left this earth. He said this in John 14, 27, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind, and heart. And the peace that I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Now I think it's really important to remember that the world cannot give this kind of peace that Christ gives us. It's all about Jesus. I mean that's what life recovery is all about. It begins and ends with Christ. If you don't have Christ, you're not going to have this peace that the world can't give. But if we let the world, the world can sure take it away. And I believe there is this evil force known as Satan who would like to kill, destroy, mess up any kind of peace that you have. So it's important that we don't just give it away. I think that uh, God's saying that I, I'm leaving this peace with you. It's a great encouragement to us to, if we're not experiencing peace, let's do something uh, to find it. Now, there's a really crummy thing that happens in the Christian community. When bad stuff happens, you've got some really uh, toxic teachers who say, you ought to have a real peace about that instantly. Now, let me just ask you this. Somebody has a child that's sick dies, uh, has a, 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 becomes a quadriplegic, paraplegic, how are you going to be instantly at peace with that? Well, if you're a real, live, wonderful, loving parent, you're not. It's horrific what that could do. And so we have to work through, and that's what I'm talking about here. We have to work through stuff to get through stuff. And, and here's my number one point. God wants to help us get through whatever we're going through. And he's there for us. Martin Luther King Jr., just uh, such a wonderful communicator, he said this, the ultimate measure of a person, it's not when that person stands in moments of comfort and, uh, and confidence. No. He said the measure of a person occurs when they are in moments of discomfort and inconvenience. And isn't that true? And here's the, uh, the thing. No matter how bad things get, if we try to fix it under our own power by ourselves, no matter how bad they get, we can make them even worse. I've certainly done that in my life. And boy, am I ever glad that I've had a lot of really wise people around me to say this. Hey, why don't you quit that? Really would be important. Isaiah 46, 4 says, I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you and I will care for you and I will carry you along 
and save you. So here's God's encouragement and, and His, well, He's just saying, hey, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to carry you. Now, He doesn't say He's going to prevent problems. He doesn't say He's going to stop all pain. Nope. We live in a fallen world. We're outside the garden. So we're going to have these struggles. The New Testament tells us, don't be surprised when these fiery trials come upon you. Like there's something strange. No, they're going to happen. But here's what God's Word says. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seeking His will in all that you do and He will show you which path to take. Here it is again. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Now, most folks that get involved in some kind of a problem, uh, an addiction, some kind of relational conflict, or just totally dysfunctional and horrific relationship, they've done that by trying to solve something themselves, by trying to cope or trying to fix it. And every method that we choose, we come up with, it's deficient, it's defective, and it makes life a lot more difficult. But if we would follow God's path, it wouldn't be that way. It wouldn't be difficult. Let's go back to that peace word that we're told we're going to get through Christ. Over in the Old Testament, Jeremiah 6.16 says this. It says, stop at the crossroads and look around. Study and look for the godly path. Walk in its steps and you will find peace and rest for your soul. So there's that peace again. It's not coming up with some new thing, it's going back to God's plan and God's solution. Now, to that end, I want to give you a little method to help you get through anything. And uh, let me just sum it up by saying there's an acronym uh, that I use, the word RISE, R-I-S-E. And each one of those letters stands for something that I think is really important to help us get through whatever it is we're going through. So just think about what you're going through and would this be helpful? The R stands for reduce. So if we're going through a tough time, let's reduce the amount of sugar that we're taking because that causes our moods to fluctuate. Dr. Amen says it is absolutely an enemy of the brain. Let's reduce the amount of uh, alcohol we're drinking if we, we do drink. Let's reduce the amount of time we spend with unhealthy people. Let's reduce the amount of time that we're spending worrying and doubting. And one of the best ways to do that is to talk to a counselor, a, a licensed therapist, get in a recovery group, get a sponsor. Now you're talking about those doubts, those worries, those fears, rather than just obsessing over them all the time. But the first thing for us to do is just to look around and say, what is it that I need to reduce? The I stands for increase. What do I need to increase? Well, I'd say let's increase our time with healthy people, increase our time in God's Word, increase our time getting help from others, going to meetings, doing the things that we know are going to help us. Now, I'll take a break and I come back. We'll go through the S and the E and we'll continue through how do we get through it and move on to how do we get over it. We'll be back after this. It's hard to find a trusted friend when you're in crisis. Someone who's been there and understands, but who also has the training and skill to give you practical help. Family, friends, and churches want to help, but often they're not equipped to care for those dealing with problems like addiction and pornography, infidelity, anger, or depression. New Life Ministries is here to provide help and hope in life's hardest places. We're not focused on making people feel better, we're focused on helping people do the work that will help them be better. At New Life, we have resources available to help you, like books, DVDs, CDs, workshops, and our network of licensed counselors. If you need help, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and begin your new life today.
Welcome back to Life Recovery Today. Steve Arterburn here. We're going through how to get through, get over, and then get beyond something. We're going through the acronym RISE. I've talked about what we need to reduce, what we need to increase, but the S stands for substitute. Now, if we're going to do this well, getting through something, maybe it would be good to substitute some very negative things that we say about ourselves, negative things we say about others, and replace those with some positive things. You know, uh, Norman Vincent Peale made a real solid case for the value of positive thinking. Dr. Schuler, Robert Schuler, made a case for possibility thinking, kind of the same thing. Uh, I've certainly gone through pitiful thinking. That didn't work too well. So when we substitute these thoughts, these statements, we're really substituting a crummy attitude for a really good attitude that helps us. Hey, listen, our thoughts produce feelings. Our feelings produce attitudes and actions. And so it really does come back to what am I telling myself? What kind of information am I obsessing over and letting dominate my brain. Maybe we need to substitute direction. Maybe the direction we've been going hasn't been too, too hopeful or helpful, and we need to substitute a different direction in there. And maybe we need to substitute negative, uh, destructive people, places, things with some very positive ones. In recovery circles, they talk about maybe it's time to change playmates and playgrounds. That just means it's time to start affiliating with and hanging out some, with some really great people and, and not just the folks that want to bring us down. Even people in recovery sometimes will try to bring us down, try to shame us because they're not fully in full recovery. We have to be careful. So we need to make some substitutes there. One of the best substitutes is substituting, wasting time with productive, solid time. All right, and then the E stands for eliminate. What do we need to get rid of? How about isolation? How about disconnection? My tendency to just be me. And I tell people, all I need is God and my Bible, things like that. Maybe I need to totally eliminate anything that I've tried and has not worked to help me get to a place of freedom. Maybe I am just stuck in anger, bitterness, resentment. And that's what I need to eliminate because God is so specific. Get rid of all bitterness, resentment, anger, and rage. So if you haven't gotten rid of it, well, just saying I need to get rid of it, that doesn't help. You have to get some help in getting rid of it. But once you do, the freedom that you experience is spectacular. And so we want to get through this stuff. And guess what else? God wants to, us to be helpful to other people that are trying to get through it too. In other words, if you're married and you lose a child, well, you got two people going through something. So you, you really need to do your work, but you also need to make room and help this other person as they're dealing with it too. So you have to ask, am I encouraging or am I discouraging? Am I building up or am I uh, tearing down? A lot of people have spent more time with their spouses than ever before since this coronavirus. And they hear the phrase, do you have to do that right now? <laughs> because it's so irritable to spend so, so much time together in some cases. Or they hear, what? About a thousand times from the other room. It's not easy being together all the time. And yet when we work it out and we find a way to make that intimacy in the relationship work, it is so, so precious to experience. 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Here's a little marriage and relationship manual in one verse. Encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. What an encouragement. But what do we do? We tear people down. We, uh, we're convinced that we uh, need to fix them, change them, uh, cure them, all sorts of things like that that we think would really, really be helpful for them to get over something. Now, when we're out here and uh, we're doing this work, to be fighting each other when what we need to be fighting is the enemy, 
is such a, a sad thing. I was um, doing our radio program one time, and there was another radio host who openly criticized New Life because we choose to be a Christian program that doesn't quote scripture all the time. And here's a commitment that you'll hear about New Life Live. We're committed to never say anything so that all the Christians will know that we're Christians. Because we love people that aren't Christians listening to the program, and we hear about it all the time. Well, this Bible man was not happy with what he heard, and so he wanted to have a big meeting to try to tell us what we were doing wrong. I wanted to have the meeting because I didn't want him out there uh, talking the way he was, not understanding how we were trying to do something different than other people were doing. We met at this hotel and we went up the escalator to a meeting room and there, right at the base of the uh, escalator, was Deepak Chopra. <laughs> now, this guy has told people that he can help them live free of shame. And he has all sorts of methods to do this. One day I was listening to him talk, and he was talking about Christians. And he said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> so here's the guy that frees people from shame, but typically except Christians. I thought to myself, isn't it sad that this believer up here at the top of the escalator, we're going to try to work out our differences here over how much scripture should be or has to be used to be Christian. When what we ought to be doing is going down there, sitting by old Deepak, and, or Deepak, whichever one it is, and, and saying, hey, I hear you've got a really, really crummy impression of Christians. So much so that you think, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves. Well, I got to tell you, there are some Christians that need to be ashamed of themselves with what they're doing and the way that they're teaching. But I hope you see what I'm saying. We get so picky with each other that we miss getting out there and being about the mission that God has us on. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 is another one of these really great verses. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you were already doing. Just remember that verse. It's so powerful. It's so good. And uh, I just, I, if I could teach you to, to memorize it or I'd memorize it too. But it's just a great verse. Encourage each other and build each other up. How can you go wrong encouraging each other and building each other up? And of course, uh, when Paul wrote this, he was saying, and you're already doing it. So he was encouraging them as they went along. Well, let me just wrap this part up by saying this, that it's important that we get through stuff. Uh, and God's given us some tools. We need others around us. And I think coming to this place of surrender where we say, in and of myself, I have an extreme limitation and I can't get through this on my own. I need the help of God and other people. That kind of humble submission and surrender, I think, is the beginning of getting through it fully. Now, we know there are a lot of things involved in getting through something. And when we come back from the great break, I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. And this will be our part one in how do we get through and get over and get beyond the struggles of life. So we'll take a break. We'll come right back. Glad you're with me here today on Life Recovery Today. Life recovery isn't just about making the courageous choice to give up an addiction or dependency. It's a journey towards health, wholeness, and becoming your very best you. If you need resources to help you in your journey, we can help. There are many life recovery resources that you can do on your own, with a group, or with your church. We have Bibles, workbooks, and devotionals that you can use to work your recovery right where you are. That's the beauty of life recovery. To learn more or to get the Life Recovery Bible or any other life recovery resource, visit liferecoverytoday.net or call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E.
Welcome back to Life Recovery Today. I know this. I know that you might be going through something that you never dreamed you'd have to go through. I know that there might be somebody in your family who's going through something that you never thought they'd have to go through or you never thought they'd go through it or you would have to go through it with them. There are things that come upon us that are shocking. There are things that our kids do that we never dreamed we'd have to deal with. We have parents that, even though they're our parents, sometimes they're adolescent in the way they deal with us and with other people. Life is really, really hard. And I know that we, we grab on to just anything. We think, just you know, give me this and I can finally get through it. In relationships, some people would rather grab on to someone sick than have no one to grab on to at all. And in the process, they make the situation worse. We just aren't very good on our own. We miss a lot of really good stuff. But I want you to know God is there for you. And He wants to give you the strength and the power and the comfort to get through it. If you're not seeing a counselor or a coach or in a Bible study or a recovery group or having some really great friends that can help you in ways you never dreamed, if you're not doing that, that would really help you as you try to get through things. At New Life, we do intensives all the time, and you can find out about them by calling 1-800-NEW-LIFE or going to newlife.com. It'll help you if you get involved in one of those weekend intensives. Also, uh, I've got a Bible I'll give you. It's the Restoration Bible, and I'd be happy to send that to you at stevesocial at newlife.com. You just email me uh, the request for the Bible, stevesocial at newlife.com. And you can get all the life recovery materials uh, there at newlife.com or 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll continue the series uh, it'll be a three-parter, and the next time I'm going to talk about how is it that we don't just get through it, but we get over it. And I'm going to talk to you about somebody that it doesn't seem like, even though they had a giant of a faith, that they ever, ever got over what had happened to them. In the meantime, just know we care about you, we love you, we're excited when people surrender to God and enter into recovery. See you next time. Thanks for joining us for Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. We hope this program has helped you integrate God's truth and wisdom into your recovery journey. This program is brought to you by New Life Ministries, and it's your support that keeps this program on the air. When you contact us for any reason, be sure to let us know that you watch on NRB. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to liferecoverytoday.net. Please join us again next week for more Life Recovery Today.